Hi, I'm Peng. And I'm Matthew. And today we're going to talk about Asopolysaccharide in Sinorhizobium melilloti. In this video, we're going to talk about its function, synthesis, regulation, and application. So, what is Asopolysaccharide? It is a natural polymer of high molecular weight that are composed of sugar residue and are secreted by microorganisms in the surrounding environment. Esopolysaccharide generally consists of monosaccharides and some non-carbohydrate substituents. Some microorganisms produce EPS when conditions are not favorable to their proliferation. So here, as you can see that the EPS is located outside the cell. And this is some structure of EPS. The function of exopolysaccharides in S. melilloti is to help to tolerate detergents, salts, acidic pH, heat, antimicrobial peptides, and reactive oxygen species known as RS. EPS suppresses host plant's defense responses because it lives in the root nodules. EPS2 is important for biofilm formation, as you can see here. The importance of biofilm formation is actually to protect the bacteria from antibiotic. As you can see here, reduced penetration of antibiotic molecules is due to extracellular polysaccharides. Now, this is the biosynthesis pathway of succinoglycan, also known as EPS1. This pathway is catalyzed by a group of exoenzymes here, which is encoded by the exo-EXS gene. Now, firstly, it's actually the elongation of the main sugar chain, where the exoenzymes add different kinds of sugar to the chain. After that is the addition of side chain to the main chain. After the decoration of the subunit, multiple subunits are are combined together and polymerized and after that transported out of the cell and in this case as succinoglycan. Now these are the biosynthesis and export pathways of EPS. First is the WZX, WZY dependent pathway, ABC transporter dependent pathway and synthase dependent pathway. However, today we are only going to focus on the first one which is the WZX, WZY dependent pathway because EPS1 uses this pathway. As you can see, the units are assembled by glycosyl transferase here and after that it is exported into the periplasmic space by WZX protein. After that, WZY polymerizes it and eventually is exported out of the cell by OPX. Here we can see the regulatory network correlating exopolysaccharide production, quorum sensing, and catabolite repression in S. melilloti. Now, regulation of EPS production is complex. In addition to abiotic stress and symbiotic inputs, EPS synthesis is regulated in response to level of nutrients. For example, nitrogen starvation, as you can see here, activates the production of EPS. However, today, we will be focusing on a particular group of proteins called EMMABC. As you can see, here are the genes encoding EMMABC. EMMA work in conjunction with EMMBC to perceive environmental signals and regulate important cell function and gene expressions. EMMBC encodes a two-component sensor histidine kinase and a response regulator. Now, in this case, as you can see in the map, EMMABC represses EXO and EXS genes, which in turn represses EPS1 synthesis. Now, there are several experiments to determine the function of EMMABC. Now, Maurice and Gondalas in 2009 did an experiment where EMMA and EMMB is mutated in S. melilloti. Now, they found out that EMMA5 mutant overproduced EPS 
where it forms calcofloor bright mucoid colonies as you can see on the right here it's an example of the phenotype now mutants where tn5110 was inserted upstream of the emmb gene also ovules overproduce eps1 and yield the same mucoid bright phenotype now tm5110 is a transposon carrying constitutively active outward reading promoters at both ends now these outward promoters may minimize polar effects on downstream genes and when inserted upstream of a gene may allow the isolation of mutants with upregulated gene expression now how do we know that the eps produced is one but not two now calcofloor white fluorescent dye binds specifically to eps1 in 2018 barnard and long also did the same experiment and obtained the same results now, however barnard and long discovered they were transcription in the smb20055 cbtj intergenic region which is here as you can see it, it, it belongs to a previously unidentified gene encoding a small protein now overproduction of eps1 was observed when a tn5110 is inserted into three sites upstream of the unidentified gene as you can see denoted by the triangles here examination of the region downstream of this insertion identify an open reading frame or orf encoding an 11 kilo delta protein the protein was named emmd due to its apparent connection to the emmabc regulatory circuit now for further confirmation and identification of the gene region dna carrying emmd orf was cloned into an expression vector known as prf771 and conjugated into a wild type strain rm1021 uh, with this a mucoid phenotype was conferred as you can see here now next site directed mutagenesis was conducted first the start codon was mutated into gtg and ata and as you can see both did not yield mucoid phenotype therefore it was confirmed that ATG is most likely the start codon of EMMD. After that, early chain termination was introduced to the EMMD ORF. However, as you can see here, these two, they did not yield a mucoid phenotype. Now, after that, EMMD was deleted in EMMA and EMMB mutants. That was used previously now they found out that they were more calcofloor bright and mucoid than the wild type but less than that of their parents emm mutant strains now how emmd over expression causes eps1 overproduction is still unknown and it is just recently been discovered but it can be said that emmd may be involved with fine tuning the emm abc regulatory circuit in conclusion what have we covered today is EPS are polysaccharides that is secreted by the cell. Its main function is for protection. Just now, we also covered that the synthesis of succinoglycan, one example of EPS where exoenzymes are responsible for it. This process regulated by the valid factors and one of it is EMMABC and newly discovered EMMD. So, what's the importance of studying as meliloti? This cyanorhizobium meliloti plays an important role in nitrogen fixation by converting dinitrogen to ammonium while inhabiting the roots nodules of plants. As the interface between the bacterium and its environment, the S. meliloti cell surface and exopolysaccharides play a critical role in adapting to varied soil environments and in interaction with the plant's host. 
So, what's the application of EPS-1, known as Sassino Guidance? EPS have found multifarious applications in various industries due to the wide diversity in composition. In food industry, Sassino Gaiken is used as gelling agent. Sassino Gaiken is also used in the oil recovery due to the thickening and stabilizer. So this is the reference that we use in this video.